let's now take a look at continuous emission expansion. Okay, so in the scene we have this wine glass and we have this source, this sphere here, and we're gonna try to fill this glass until it overflows. So this is the goal. Now if I just again do npm configure like we always do, and uh, this is going to be our collider, this is our source, and I'm gonna need a lot more resolution for this, like that. So for in terms of the source, it's pretty good. For the collider itself, uh, we're just going to increase the resolution on the collider directly. And uh, as always, when we have a thin collider like this, it's a good thing to enable uh, particle level collision. And we use a default method here, and it's gonna work perfectly fine. Um, just gonna make sure that I change a little bit the visualization. I want to look at the speed of the particle from zero to one, and I'm gonna look at this color scheme here of white water. Good. Um, I'm going to disable the collider visualization so we can just see this uh, transparent version of it. And now if I just hit play, okay, well, of course we don't have uh, the proper material, so I'm gonna set it to water. And also we only we are only emitting once at the moment, I want continuous emission. So now if I just emit, this is what we have. And we are adding some uh, material here, but we're not uh, able to fill the volume of the glass. And uh, just to give you a little bit more explanation about why this is. So, um, okay, let's first start with a voxel. So remember with NPM, you have this dual representation of uh, voxels and particles. So this is, let's say one voxel and these are your particles in that voxel. Okay, so since NPM is simulating this continuous material and we have this dual representation of voxels and particles, and usually we are packing like around eight particles per voxels, there's no point in adding more particles. Like if, if even if I add like a lot of particles like this in a single voxel, all of these are only going to contribute to a single voxel. And after that, the information from this voxel is uh, scattered back to the particles. So having a bunch of particles packed like that is just going to cost more in terms of computation, but it's not going to help you get more details. So what's happening by default with NPM is anytime that you're trying to add new particles, it's going to look at uh, its neighborhood. And if there are already particles nearby, it's not going to allow it. So if uh, so let's say if I'm, I'm trying to add this particle, it's looking around and it's seeing, job. it's seeing, okay, um, I see this particle, this particle here. So it's like within, uh, too close to my neighborhood. So there's no point for me to exist because I'm just going to cost computation time. But what happens is uh, instead if we, like if I just do a couple of undo. So if, I, if I'm able to push those particle, particles away, right? So if I source some internal pressure here and I get these particle to move, let's say here, here and there, now, if I try to add a particle here, there's nothing in this neighborhood, right? Like those particles has been, uh, have been moved away. So now I can introduce new particles there. And if I do that repetitively, like on every sub steps, at some point I will be able to go uh, uh, and to fill a container by adding more particles because every single step, if I'm sourcing internal pressure and I'm pushing everything away, from the emitter, I'm able to uh, slowly like grow this volume of emission. And this is exactly what we're trying to do in Udini. So if I go back to this, um, now what we can do is we select this NPM source and we activate this overlapping emission. And uh, we have this expansion parameter now. And just like if I keep it at one and we play this, it's not gonna do a huge difference. Like you might be able to see it, like it's slowly growing, but very, very little. But if we uh, crank that up to 25, now we're sourcing a lot more uh, internal pressure. And now we're getting what we want. So we're able to have those particle uh, push away from each other. This is creating a void. And now when we're trying to do this continuous emission, since we have those void pockets of uh, no material, basically, we are able to introduce new points. And this is what allows us to do this. 
but you're not only limited to uh, liquid materials, right? So I could just take all of this, copy it over, and now instead of uh, simulating, I'm just going to kill the simulation. So instead of simulating liquid, I can do um, change preset and let's do snow, right? And I'm gonna change the visualization of this. So I'm just gonna do a point wrangle here and I'm gonna store the bird time of those particles. Okay. Right on the NPM solver itself, I need to go to output and make sure that this is being outputted. And now I'm just going to do another wrangle here and we're gonna say CD is equal to a ramp, oops, sorry. And we're gonna do BERT. And I just want to wrap around so as soon as we reach the end of the ramp, I just wanna wrap around and sample again from the beginning. So we're gonna make this a color ramp, like so. And we're gonna pick the infrared preset. So now if I play this, we are filling the glass with the snow material, which behaves totally differently than the, the water preset that we had. And we have this cool visualization where we can see, depending on at what frame or at what time it was emitted, we see a different uh, color. So it allows us to track uh, how things are evolving. And if we are patient enough, at some point, this should break and create some cool uh, visual. Cool. So yeah, uh, this is just to show you that you can use this uh, feature to do a lot more than just like filling a container with water. You can use different type of materials and uh, achieve very cool effects. Um, and just know that the uh, demonstration that was shown for the launch of H21, like this cookie and cream demo, there was some uh, whipped cream being added uh, on top of the drink at the end and this feature of continuous uh, emission expansion was specially designed to achieve this shot so yeah if you need to do some whipped cream uh, definitely look into that feature because uh, it's going to be very useful to you